that done? Yeah, they like they reconstructed like the the side wall and they took out my implants. And so it's a recording, so we should put out a, we should Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just started recording and she started talking about it. So we'll talk about it later. <laughs> How are you out there, Wise? Good. <laughs> what, what are we talking about? You, you are being recorded. <laughs> All right. We were talking about surgery. All right. Yeah, you're right. How are you recovering, by the way? I'm in a little bit of pain. I'm mostly tired. But I'll be good. No sparring. No sparring. <laughs> Actually, Professor, I can't do anything. I've got tubes in, so I'm just watching. Okay. Yeah, I have my mask too, like, it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty great one today. Well, Jack's here. That's He'll true. do all my work. You'll be able to. You'll be able to use this one over and over again, though. Okay. So you can come back and review it. It will be on YouTube also. Hey George, do you have your Zoom link set up to make you look like, like have the filter to make you look all pretty and young? No, do I look pretty and young? Is that what you're trying I mean, to yeah, about? you do. But I'm just curious. It wasn't. I wasn't observing um, <laughs> anything. I just know there's there's a button you can push. It's like they give it a, a name that doesn't sound too vain. It's like, uh, you know, enhanced visual quality, but it's the same filter that like uh, people use on Instagram to make themselves look younger. Huh? Yeah. No, like whatever the default thing, I haven't messed with it much. Like whatever the default setting is on Zoom, that's what I have. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if mine's working right now. But I appreciate the compliments. <laughs> I wasn't complimenting you. I wasn't looking. It was just a conversation <laughs> starter. <laughs> I just no, you can't take it back now. I know. I know it sounded a little gay, but you can't take it back. You don't look a day over thirty-nine and a half. <laughs> I'm just waiting for this to um, get to the YouTube. Man, it says connected. Well, well, well my thing is recording live on YouTube, so I think we ha we are recording already. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. All right. Well, then no more inappropriate comments. All right, we're gonna get started now. Who we got? Good morning, Saima. Donovan. Yeah, I definitely have that filter on. Looks great. All right, let's begin, team. Here we go. One step, speak together, attention, and power. Okay, I have a pretty special class planned. Um, being somewhat of a repeat of last night uh, and building upon it. All neon belly drill. So if you have your grappling dummy, that's going to help you quite a bit. If not, I'm going to give you options for how you can do these movements. Um, as we reopen Monday, those of you that have your grappling dummy, bring those in. It doesn't have to be one of the like $400 ones online. Post a video about how you can make your own just using uh, pillows and a couple of uh, towels for the arms and legs. You can even use those cool noodles, you know, like the ones that are like floating devices. Those work really well too. That actually gives a little bit of like uh, tension in the in the movement. So uh, bring those in for those of you that plan on coming in starting next week. 
And if you plan on staying home, which is fine, we'll continue the online classes as well. We're gonna go back to our regular schedule. So 11 a.m. jujitsu, and then the evening times will be uh, the times that we had before we went into the online classes. So those are staggered, so I won't go over all those now. But, um, let's get into a little balance drill, loosen up the body, and then uh, go into our drills, okay? So we're starting one leg, and we're just circling one leg out like this. We're gonna stay on one leg the whole, the whole time until we switch, okay? So right leg's moving. If you lose your balance, just tap your toe down and bring it back. Good, let's go inward. Good, knee to the chest, and bring it almost to the floor without touching the floor. Now, we're gonna do an airplane, and we're gonna do like a horse kick, straight backwards, like you're trying to kick the wall behind you. Lean forward, kick, back into your chest. Now we're doing push kicks, so, and in. Good. Now, just swing. Start off real little, and then try to get, swing it a little bit bigger. Really use your arms to help. Good. Side kicks. This one's a little bit trickier. Okay. Be a little. Bring your leg in. Kick. And back in. Just like you're doing a side kick. You did Taekwondo when you were a kid. You're going to be awesome at this. I did it. That's why I'm terrible at it. And with control, set that foot down. All right. Let's do the other side. So the first one, for the first one, just knees to the, oh no, hips. Open the hips. And backwards. And in your chest. And horse kick backwards. So airplane position, just kicking and bringing that knee back in. Good. Push, kick. You're kicking in a door. Good. Now, which one do we do? The swings, let's do the swing, right? Right here. Side kicks. Ooh, this side's worse than the other. And slowly set that down. Okay, let's get a little blood flow. Keep those, those muscles that got tight, kind of uh, loosen up a little bit. Let's just do some jumping jacks here, too. Ready? And Begin. Ten. Let's go 
funny. Third. One oh three. All right. Now this position, this, this drill rather, is really going to help with um, kind of engaging and prepping the muscles that we use for our knee on belly position. Now, after we complete this little uh, exercise, we get into the drills we do with a partner, and then we'll save the uh, last part for Q and A, demonstration, and everything, uh, everything else. Okay. So here's the movement that I want to see. All right. We're going to start in a plank position. We're going to go through a series of balances on the hands with one foot off the ground, okay? So what's the best angle here? Let me do this angle. Right. So what I want to see right here is up, and here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna say it first. My knee is gonna come up, touch, slide down, slide back, back. Then I'm bringing it to my other elbow, and then to my face, okay? So let's try this together. So, position, leg up, bring it to the near side elbow. Drop it down to your wrist without touching the floor. Bring it back up high, kick it back. Now bring it to your cross elbow. Drop it toward the floor. Bring it back up and back. Bring it toward your face. Drop it toward the floor, bring it back. Pause, now take one hand off the ground. Now switch hands. Find your balance first. Now bring it back. Good. Let's do the other side. Leg up. Bring it to the near side elbow. Slide it down. Slide it up. Bring it back. Far side elbow. Touch. Slide down. Back up. Back. Bring it toward your face. Drop down, bring it up, hold, take the hand off the ground, switch, back down with control first, and back, good, okay, so that drill is activating your core and your arms all together with different angles of resistance. And we do that a lot, like when we're hitting the knee on belly and we're switching, we're turning our knees. We do it when we're passing the guard with cut through, shin cut passes, angle changes. We turn our hips, we move our core in a twisting motion in order to both uh, increase speed and increase pressure. And the knee on belly position, when done properly, is maybe the highest pressure giving position that we have in jiu-jitsu, right? Because I can direct all my weight through my body, through my leg, to the point of my knee, and onto my opponent's sternum area where they need freedom to breathe. So. 
I talk about this, kind of sounds mean, but the reality is, is we need the knee on belly position sometimes to control someone who we feel is going to easily escape or throw us if we settle our weight too closely. Okay, so all the talk and lessons that we do on pressure tend to involve um, very close proximity. Side mount pressure, smash it, right? Uh, mount pressure, closing the gap. But we need transitional movements and um, we need to be able to handle different body types. So for example, just don't say it out loud, but I want you to think about maybe the strongest person that you trained with at the school, right? The biggest, strongest person, whoever you feel can throw you across the room if they had to. And now ask yourself, what would happen if you just started in side mount? You think you keep them pinned or might they just move you easily? The knee on belly allows you to separate that still keeping pressure, but um, using it. And then when they get tired, take them out. Or they turn away, take them back. Okay, so get your dummy now, and let's do this drill. My dummy doesn't have any arms, legs, or head. So I'm gonna tell you this is the head, right? All right, we're gonna build up on this one. We're starting the neon belly. My foot is hooked right along the curvature of my, my dummy, which would be my opponent's hip, okay? I've got good posture. I can lower, but my, my back's pretty strong. And I'm just gonna rest my hands kind of right here. For you guys, it might be the shoulders, it might be the ground, it's okay, okay? And then from here, I wanna switch. And when I do this, my knee comes in, I curl my legs, switch, rehook my foot attach and I want to build up speed to where I can do that fast right without separating so this is a lot of space that's very different so motion there's never a time where I'm not controlling the person right because I'm not hopping. I'm making a very fast switch. You gotta use your fast twitch, fast switch muscles here, right? So in slow motion, and start off slow and then we're about speed. Both knees, switch, one knee. Two, switch, one. And then try to just do the switch part fast. See that? Switch. Then you can get to where Okay, so let's work this rhythm a little bit. And each time I'm placing my opposite foot flat. I'm not going here just so I can be in sprint position. Not like that, I see this sometimes. No, you're in the position as though you're gonna hold it there, right? Controlling the turn, back, all right? Let's see this for a minute. Come on, Donovan. If you don't have a partner, it's just more of a push-up game for you, right? You gotta be here. You gotta have an invisible partner, but no resting. There we go, nice. Good, curl the feet back to the butt when you switch. Good, Michelle. Michelle was here yesterday. She got a, she got a head start, that's good. Nice. Okay, now let's add to it. Now we're doing reverse knee on belly. And at the end, I'm gonna explain how we can work all these positions against the real person and why we, why we do them, okay? Um, but the way I'm gonna do this one now, instead of switching left to right, is I'm switching front to reverse. And so the head is still here. I'm still kind of controlling the leg and this. Then I can back to here. So let's do this drill, right? And here, let me, since we already have the first drill, let me show you how I want to see this one, right? I want to see switch a few times. 
And then an odd number of switches, so we land on the other side. Five, two, three. Five. Okay, so now we're doing reverse knee on belly switches, knee ride to knee ride switches. Make sure that part is an odd number of switches so we land on the opposite side and then continue, okay? Go ahead and begin. If you're not sure, you can start with me and do it in my rhythm. If you got it, just start moving. So my rhythm is just gonna be reverse, reverse a couple of times. And to switch, one, two, three. Reverse, reverse. And then switch. That's the whole drill. Good. Let's see everybody move. Oh, you got you got something there, Donovan. Nice. Foam roller knee on belly tool, I like that. Just don't roll and like break anything. That includes furniture or limbs. Very nice. Good, okay. Now we're gonna keep building on this. By the end. You guys are just going to be monsters at this position. Quick note, I noticed uh, Jack was doing the switch uh, kind of like how I was doing it, switching, and George was going, both are correct. They just require, they're just different, right? Like one is like, I want to do a fast switch. The other is a little more crowded, like there's, you're dealing with arms. So you come in, you kind of smush the arms out of the way. So both are correct. I'm glad, I'm glad there was some uh, mixing of that variation there so I can remind me to bring that point up. So we can definitely slow things down. Most positions are sometimes fast and sometimes slow. Okay, so what have we got so far? We have the switches, left to right, reverse, regular, back and forth. And now I wanna mount. The mount is easy, okay? Posted leg, tucks up under the near arm, hand post, other hand grabs the arm, mount. When I mount, heavy twisting, boom, mount. To dismount, pressure, curl, back to here. Now, back to my rotation. Odd number of switches, or, it doesn't matter so much because you might just unmount. And then when we mount, see that? One, two, three, four, back. Switch, switch, or lower transition. Oh, then I can do some of the switches. Mount. Okay, that's the rhythm. Let's get to it. Same as before, but every, every couple of uh, switches, you're gonna add the mount. And Jack, grab that forearm with your right hand. Yes, pull that invisible arm toward you. Like you're grabbing their arm, now, not curling it, just grabbing their tricep and kind of pulling it toward your hip. Yeah, and then you drop your knee over. It's real subtle, they're gonna be fighting back. Good job, Donovan. Nice, Simon. Simon's just got a couch pillow. That's innovative. Very nice. Even if you just have a couch pillow or something with no arms, I still want you to visualize grabbing that arm and tucking your knee in under the near arm. Because otherwise we leave room for the elbow escape. Good, now keep going, but look, for a moment, 
add in some attacks that you got a gi to work with. If not, you can just uh, kind of makeshift one, right? But what are my different attacks here? I have my X choke here, right? I have, you know, my switch here. I have my baseball bat choke. When I mount, I've got my X choke here. Okay, so add a choke in there and then go back into your rhythm. So do the rhythm, maybe do it for like, you know, 25 or 30 seconds uh, of mixing in all the movements we've done so far. And then visualize that you have worn your partner down. They're tired. They're not thinking straight. Their neck is wide open. Go attack the neck. Get the submission and then back into your rhythm. Everyone get ready. Three, two, one, go. So moving. Let you. Good, good. Thirty more seconds. Keep adding the attacks, team. <clears throat> All right. Good work. Okay. I'm going to add another way to take the mount. Um, two more ways. We'll do one at a time. Train a little bit. Of okay, so these two are surprise attacks. They're not real high percentage, all right? But they can be very useful. So just because a move is not high percentage does not mean you do not make it part of your game. There's sometimes people go too extreme one way or the other. They only want to do the low percentage flashy moves because they want to look good and they lose all their pressure. And, um, they lose like the integrity of their position. And then you have people that they want to keep things so simple that their game is predictable all the time. They might have solid core fundamentals, but there's no surprises. I mean, we need to have a little surprise here. And there. So this is a um, less expected way to mount your opponent. The mount we've done here involves the mount they expect. They expect you to step right into the mount. They're not expecting it from here. They think you're just going to come back. So what happens is many times when they turn into you, they just slide and mount. And now what, what technique do I have right here? Armbar, right? I can armbar, or if they start defending, I can hold the collar, come back to the regular uh, mount. So let's do that one together, okay? Knee on belly, reverse. Now, what I'm going to do, my posted leg is going to and this leg stretches to get heavy, like I'm doing the, the stretch, right? See that? It's important that this leg stretches and stays heavy. Now I can take an arm bar, that arm cut there, or I start coasting and cupping the arm just like before. Let's try it again. Knee on belly. Reverse. Oh, step. Step far enough. But all your weight is on your opponent, not on your feet. They're going to push you over. All your weight's right here. Okay. Then tuck that knee in, grab that forearm, take the mount. All right. Now we're back into a rhythm. Then every once in a while, we have the back step mount. Take the full mount and continue. Let's go.
good. All right, Donovan, show me how you're gonna do this to a foam roller. That's not a foam roller, that's one of those long couch pillows. <laughs> All right, show me, show me the mount we just did. Go to knee on belly. Go to reverse knee on belly. Now twist. No, now you're gonna step your right leg behind you and over. It's gonna work, I promise. Step your right leg back. Yeah, yeah, all the way around, all the way over, all the way over. Yeah, keep going, keep going. There's the mount. Yes, beautiful, good. One more now, too. Last one. And then we off to some Q&A. Okay. So, give me a thumbs up if we're sweaty. Yes? Excellent. Knee on belly. Switcher. Reverse. Expected pressure mount, reverse knee on belly, back step mount, knee on belly, step over the front. The last one. So everybody do this. Knee on belly. Imagine you're controlling the hips and the sleeve or the uh, lapel. You're going to turn your knee in. And the weight is going to be now your hip sitting on this. That's where your weight is. This leg is very light and free. When you step it over, you are exactly in the position you were when you did the reverse back step mount that we just did. Okay? So, this can be a good one when uh, the person's rolling away with the arm tucked in, they don't expect it. Right? So, do it together. Knee on belly, have a seat, kick the leg, and as you mount, turn your hips. Good posture right here. I'm ready to like push my knee in. Okay. Now what do I have? There's an arm bar. Or tuck the arm in, take the mount. Okay. I'm gonna go through this whole sequence together as a team. You're gonna do just what I do, and then I'm gonna let you go on your own. For two minutes and I want to see how uh, creative you can be with these. Okay, so all together we're doing everything. Let's start in the knee on belly. Let's get a few switches. Switch. Reverse. Switch to the other side. Reverse. Switch. Pressured mount. Post the hand near side. Tuck the knee. Grab the arm. Step over to the mount. Back to the knee on belly. Good. Reverse knee on belly. Back step. Take the mount. This mount. Get him a couple more switches in. Reverse. Switch to the other side. Reverse. Back. Sit. This front leg now kicks over the head. Center your weight right on top of it. Now I can hook, take an arm bar, or just scoop the arms. Take them out. So we're all here. All right. Let's go here. Post. Knee on belly. Your own flow game. Incorporating all the movement that we did. Two minutes straight. Ready? Begin. Forget the chokes. Keep 
Keep going. Nice, Donovan. Very nice. Good job, Michelle. Nice, Lima. Take them out. Yeah, add the chokes in too. Even if you don't have a lapel, doesn't matter. You know it's there. So visualize hitting it. Keep going. All right, everybody's rhythm looks good. Let's go 15 to 20% faster. Go. If you start losing your form, then slow it back down, okay? But if you maintain the same technical form, I want you going faster. You visualize that strongest person. You've got to wear them down. Every time you you place a knee, they try to push you, you gotta switch the knee. Whether you're going to the other side or reverse or stepping to the mount. And then you get to the mount, they try to push you off, you go back to the knee on belly. And you switch. And then they finally tire, right? They finally wear down because they can't keep up with your pressure and your rhythm. And that's when you hit the choke. Or sometimes you back step or step over the mountain, there's that arm bar there. That's the one I love to hit. They're turning away. You just flow right over into that mount. Take the arm bar. Keep going, Donovan. You're not tired. Let's go. Come on. Keep going. Look at that. Look at that speed. There's no way you needed to rest. Look at that. You're faster than everybody. Guys, you got to keep up with Donovan. Oh, he's making you guys look bad. Let's go. Let's go, Simon. Faster. There's the arm bar. Yes. Come on, Jack. Jack, yours is probably the, the most technical. Now go 20% faster. Ready? Go. Let's go, guys. 30 seconds. Let's go. I think Donovan's still going the fastest. He might get tired, though. Oh, is he resting? No fake resting. Keep going. Let's go, George. Keep moving nonstop. When I say, when I say go for the submission, then you're gonna move into whatever position you need to to hit that submission and finish. Until then, keep going faster, 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 nonstop. Every time you settle, they push you away. You gotta change again. You gotta get to the other side. You gotta move. You gotta counter their shrimp, their bridge, their push. They're trying to grab you and throw you. You gotta switch knees to the other side. Ah, oh, they're slowing down. They're getting tired. Let's go, Donovan. They're getting tired. They're tired. Now go for the submission. Go. Set it up. Set it up. Get the tap. And time. Excellent work. All right. Let's go. Good work, everyone. So keep it here. Catch your breath, drink some water if you like. Hopefully everybody's uh, feels like they at least had one match, right? There's no reason when you're home not to get some training in, okay? We all know whether we did it or not. We all know if we had a legitimate reason not to train for one day and the self-honesty is the most difficult part of reaching a goal is really being completely honest with uh with ourselves right and we can apply this logic to anything that we want to do when it comes to jujitsu we skip training sometimes because we can't make it to the academy. So think about any time that you didn't make it to the academy because you weren't able to. Like 
there will be legitimate reasons. You're out of town, you've got a hundred things to do, you have an emergency situation come up, you cannot make the schedule class time. And you miss the hour, hour and a half window of training here. And that becomes your reason to do no training for the entire 24 hour window. And the reality is we all know how to move. We all know how to drill. We know how to push our bodies in a way that improves our cardiovascular output, our strength, our conditioning, our agility. We know how to move and mimic and visualize. And we, and we let ourselves kind of off the hook because like, oh, I couldn't make it today, okay? I've done it, so it's not, I'm not like um, immune to that type of uh, thinking. And I still have that voice that's like, oh, like, um, like I'll give you an example, like um, about four, minimum four, but I try to go five days a week to Dr. Lou's at all in for my strength and conditioning. Every morning, religiously. They've been closed like everyone else for this week, or for this, what, like two months now? And so my strength conditioning has really taken a back seat to, you know, I just haven't been doing it as much. But I have all the equipment that I need. I have all, of my, I have my own body and I have space. So there's no reason I can't do it. I just have allowed that uh, voice to tell me like, oh yeah, they're closed. You're, you're, where you work out is closed. So you're not working out that much right now. It's not true. I still have goals. I still have fitness goals. So that's on me. And we can kind of, you know, um, point the finger at ourselves. We can get more done. So anyway, I'm not going to gripe. I'm, this is probably more of a talk for myself to motivate myself. That's why I was griping and yelling when you guys were doing it. But I think you guys uh, got to work out there that at least, like I said, at least mimic um, one sparring session, one good one. If you're sweating and your heart rate's up and you're moving and you're, it's not just that, but like you got to think about it. You got to imagine that these things are happening. Your brain requires energy too. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. I had a really good time. I thought that was super fun. I felt like a kid again moving around, even just on the bag. So let's open it up for uh, some questions that you might have. And, um, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of go from there, whether it's about the drill we did or otherwise. Would anyone like to start? Is everyone tired? Everyone knows everything about Neon Belly already? My focus is my... I focus a lot on putting my knee sort of in the sternum. Yeah. But a lot of the time I'm, I find that it takes my foot away from anchoring it on the hip. Is that? Mm -hmm. And so then when I pull my foot back, I don't feel like my knee is covering yeah. enough space to really pin them. Gotcha. Let me show you something um, that uh, works. First, Cameron, do this one to me. Um, so let's go on this side. Okay, so, so I think what, what you're saying here, this knee is, so get the full position. I'll talk through it, yeah. So this knee, you try to put on the sternum, but you feel like, uh, you feel like, oh, that's good, that's good. You feel like the foot on this leg is pulling away? Yes, sir. Okay. Like my, my foot, is not attached to the hip when I dress, when I put my knee on the sternum. Okay, there's a few things. I mean, it's really not that far away in order to do that. What you might be doing is trying to drive the knee down and, and lifting your leg up. But the one little thing that can increase pressure, start with the knee a little bit lower, like kind of low ribs, anchor the foot there, and then corkscrew this in. You see that? So when Professor Cameron starts on the side, like here, and he moves his way up to the knee on belly, he kind of slides here. Because many times I'm protecting this movement, this position anyway. But he starts here, and then he corkscrews his knee in, right? And it kind of settles in that position. It's very heavy, right? And his foot, one thing too, let's go over here. This foot is curling, and his own foot is pushing like that. So when he corkscrews, he pushes his foot into my hip. Look at that. Like that, that moves my entire body. Because what I want to do, I want to go like this and get away. And when he pushes that foot, it rolls me. And now I feel like, man, I can only turn away from him. And that's where the hand control or the drills that we did. 
Like if I'm real strong and I just try to bring someone away, he can switch to the other side. Yeah, exactly, right? And then he does the same thing. He corkscrews the leg in, and now I feel like, man, I gotta do it this way, right? But um, if, you're, if you feel like your foot's not attaching, one of the best things to do is slide your knee as far as it needs to go for your foot to lock onto the hip, and then corkscrew that. Foot pushes the hip, knee pushes the, the kind of the ribs this way. It's almost like you're, you have a twisting action going on the torso um, that makes it really heavy. Yes, sir. I know what you're saying. I actually, I can tell you what I'm doing. I, I fight to get my knee on the sternum first, so I don't, I'll, I'll start by sliding it up. Yeah, you're, you're kind of going for like the kill right away. Um, don't worry about that. Sometimes the knee on belly is real subtle. Sometimes, like for competition, if, do it again, if he just gets the knee a little bit on me and holds it, like right here, well, he's gonna get the other leg up. Yeah, he's gotta get the other leg off the ground. But this, like this calf, and this is controlled, it's not the same. And if he wants to advance up a little bit more, then he can slowly start to kind of get to that position. But you don't have to go right for the, you don't have to go right for the, the crushing position. The higher the level of competition, um, or the higher level your, your partner is, the less likely you are to go from a, to take a major leap in positional improvement, if that makes sense, right? You went from side mount, yes, which is good, and then you go to the most crushing knee on belly, probably not, because if that person is your level or maybe even a little higher than you, um, they're prepared. But if you chisel away at it, while taking care of all these other, you know, um, points of escape, then you eventually work your way there and they're, they're more tired when you get there anyway. So just take your time. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Do we have anything else that we'd like to look at? Come on guys. It's like private lesson Q and A. Yes, George. So that knee right flow was really cool, very tiring. After a while, like your legs are burning, you know, especially if you're moving fast. Do you have any other flows like that to do with a bag or a dummy? Yeah, I mean, um, you can incorporate like uh, submission movements. If I have, let's say if I have a bag, right? Uh, or, or a dummy, whatever. Like I just like the, um, let me turn this over. I just like the spinning armbar drill. And it doesn't have to be the full armbar. That's one. But the like little transition. Right? Because that's really the fast part of the drill. Once I get here, then the armbar is kind of the, the easy part, right? I've got to get to the controlling position first. Um, there's plenty of dismounting. Like we talked about how to go to the mount different ways, right? I can dismount this way. I can also dismount like this, right? Step over to the mount, boom, dismount. Mount, dismount. And I love the, like the agility and speed required to do this, you see? Now I start combining it. Step over this mount, step over mount armbar, right? Back, knee on belly, or just step over this mount, and then blend it with what you're doing, armbar, okay? So I'm sort of just um, kind of thinking of these, you know, off the top of my head, but instead, like, you just, what you want to do is build upon what you already know. Right? Identify the movements of a transition and kind of build upon them. Add in the visualization when you don't have the physical parts to grip onto. You've got the grappling dummy, so you can do it. But if I don't have a, if I want to work my X choke to arm bar combo and I don't have one, I just do exactly what I would do. Grip, grip, there's my arm bar. 
back to the choke, back to the arm bar. Oh, I lost both of them. Mount. Like I think we did one in class where we were working the entire side mount series, right? Side control, Kisuke Tommy, north side, back, side, Kisuke Tommy, mount. Now add in the neon belly, arm bar, back to the side. Okay, so now I'm just saying I'm going low and playing up high. These are all from the top, okay? If you want to add in the guard passing, add in the guard passing. You're doing all those drills, and then they start to recover. Now I won again, right? I'm here, control, cut through, bullfighter, stack's not gonna be great for something like this unless you got a leg dummy, right? But I can still, I can still kind of shin pet, oh, right here. All right, so a lot of times, like I, I really love the knee stack counter when they shrimp away. They shrimp away, their legs start to come inward. Trust me, right? And this is one of the best drills you can do so that you're not insisting on anything that's not there. I hear they start to recover right here. This leg, if I control it and I crab this one, then I can move to the other side. And of course, I might stay there and stack, but in terms of keeping a moving drill going, right? Backing away, cartwheel, backing away. So we did all the drills the other day, like the headstand cartwheel. I don't even, I don't even need a bag to do that. Um, I also think it's helpful to pyramid your way up to a more complicated sequence. Instead of just like, man, I'm just gonna do like a hundred things randomly as they come. I feel like it's too much. Like the, re the way I did this was like, we started with one drill left to right. By the time we progressed up to the last drill, everybody's kind of in a flow state of doing all of them because you've already done the other one so many repetitions. So do that with anything you want to add to it. Take, a, take one you know, add one level, new level to it, and then go through a fast series where you incorporate everything. Then recover, then add in one more. And then eventually you, you get into that like, it's like your body just takes over, you're not even thinking by just moving and reacting. It feels awesome. You can, it's really like, it's like active meditation. Like your mind leaves the, the equation and you're just floating in your body. It's, I don't wanna to sound too like weird, but it is, right? I think we've been in that state before where we're just like, and everything's kind of clicking. Um, but you gotta put in the reps before that. So um, anyway, I don't wanna to talk too much if it's not about your question, but the, the, the extra ones I showed you there, does that, does that give you a few ideas? Yeah, out of that, I already have like probably six rounds worth of uh, uh, drills to do, so good stuff. Yeah, and if you wanna be real creative, guys, you can, um, you can say, okay, I'm gonna do a knee on belly round only. Then I'm gonna do a side mount round only. Then a submission round only. And guard passing only. And then round five, everything, right? Do it all together. And for grappling dummy purposes, um, unless you got one of those really awesome ones, uh, guard passing is going to give you, you know, quite a bit more. As far as guard retention, like guard drilling on your back, you can do it, but um, obviously it helps with another person. There are, there are different things we can use with bands and our belt and things like that. You just gotta get a little more creative. All right, good stuff. Any more, team? We're good? Nothing, Melissa? Simon, you good? So so. Okay. But I'm a little discouraged. I feel like that, that's like a two star review that I just got. I was like, you good, Simon? Mm. What were you going to say, Melissa? I have questions, but I'm a little bit discouraged because I can't put them to practice for a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, so 
So my wrestler comes at me in a low stance, and he's almost always leaning with his head. Yeah. Occasionally, I can snap him down or complete a guillotine. Um, and every once in a while, maybe jump guard to the Ezekiel. But he's kind of shaking me off in the Ezekiel. Is there a trick to closing it before I get shaken off? What are you getting? You're getting it from where? No, for Ezekiel from jumping the guard. Jumping close guard here, and he kind of weaves his head out? Yes. Get your, head, he, get your head close to his. Like ear to ear? Yeah, because if you, it's like the way you do it from the mount, you put your head there to control their head. Because to get out of the Ezekiel, they want to, they want freedom of movement, right? They want to move their head around to try to, like, it sounds like he's just scrambling out of it. Mm -hmm. You're here, your head's pinning his head. Where are they going to go? And then once it's tight, it's too late. Is there anything else I can do with a dude that's leading with his head? There's, there's, there's a hundred things you can do. Low stance, leading with the head. I'm are, you the doing, are you doing the loop choke at all? No, I didn't do the loop choke. Cross collar? Right there. You're already trying to snap him down. You're still doing that. But as you snap him down, you're looping your arm around the head, coming on the backside to choke him. But not until you recover from your okay. hospital stuff. Yeah. Simon, did you have a question for Melissa still on the, the stage? I'm just kidding. No, I uh, I felt like I was starting to come up with something, but then I kind of did lose it. But I will think about it. I will think about it. Sounds good. Uh, is that Batman? I mean, Michelle in the dark? <laughs> I was just going to ask if you can demo what Melissa was talking about for those of us who were not quite sure what it looks like. Oh, is that, is that the camera demo? Uh, gotta get it right for the YouTube. All right. I'm in a low wrestling stance because I'm thinking double leg, double leg, double leg, right? I want to get to those legs. The D grip changes my ability to shoot. I can still do it but it can slow me down for one, and it can make me run into a choke. Cross collar grip, like that. This is very dangerous for me to shoot. I'm kind of running into the neck. See that? Okay. But what you can do is initiate it by whipping the head down as your other hand comes behind to get the choke. Okay? Now to finish, so my counter to that, and maybe I'll get out. But if he gets a really heavy angle, then I won't be able to roll that. Yeah, you see this? And if I try to roll it, just kind of follow you. I'm done. For the loop choke, let's look at it up closer from the guard, right? Like it's a great move from just like a sitting guard, especially people that want to play like the double pants game, right? Because I can't, I don't have an arm to break this. And one arm's not always enough. So many people will leave here. And the more I leave, the more dangerous, you know, the more danger. If I back away in fear, he can start pushing me back and kind of threatening to knock my balance off. So this game, and the same with standing, Melissa, you play a little bit of a push-pull. Like, what are you going to do? Is he going to drag me? Is he going to push me, right? Because he can, he can drag me. You can also do that standing. He can push me. You can also do that standing, like with the knee tap. And then the in-between when I get tense, is he just cups the back of my head, and he's got this arm wrapped around, and then he's going to just drive and twist. I might be able to scramble out of it by rolling like a crocodile, but it's, it's completely evasive. I'm just running away from the danger. I'm not passing it all. Yeah, loop choke, Melissa. Loop choke your son. He's taking you down. Um, everybody go do loop, loop choke homework. Because I, I think maybe there's a few uh, of you that haven't ever used that. You will immediately make your sitting guard game like 30% more dangerous. Because you added a third angle. Right? We got the grip. 
You got the drag, you got the push, the choke. X chokes there too. But yes, yeah, it's a good one, really good one. Okay, any more before we finalize and bow out? Michelle, does that, uh, does that make sense to you? Cool. All right, guys, good work. Um, we posted a challenge of the day workout from Mr. Eric Schultz. So uh, you guys can go try that one if you like. Or I double dare everyone to do this routine that we did for 10 minutes. If you're awesome and want to be a black belt one day, that's what you'll do. Okay, no pressure. All right, team. Great work. Proud of everyone. Let's line up. Ready, stand, speak together, attention. Good work, team. Park run tomorrow at 11.30. Everyone's invited. Hope to see you there. Have an awesome weekend.